All right, hello everybody. Um, this is going to be our first kind of build slash uh, review here with uh, ZMSC Model Works. My name is Zach, and we'll be taking you through this whole process. Um, just a couple of quick notes. This kit itself and all of the parts that we're going to be looking at have been uh, paid for. This is a commission build. I do do those. Um, but this has been already paid for by the customer per his request. And uh, as, you'll, as you'll see later on, he's quite a big Mercedes-Benz freak. Uh, and he likes his German cars. Um, we've already worked on this one a little bit. I just managed to get some time to actually film now. So uh, we'll be doing that. Uh, and this is, to me, is a very nice kit number 290, the Mercedes-Benz Mercedes SLR McLaren. Uh, instructions are relatively straightforward, as usual with Tamiya. Uh, there's no messing about, no confusing bits at all. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We're not going to go through the whole sprue of you, uh, because most of these parts will end up getting uh, replaced or increased detail. Um, what I can show you so far is the interior, which we'll be starting out with. This will be done in uh, sort of that reddish brown leather uh, interior. Uh, the chassis and the tub is all, you know, kind of one piece. And uh, the engine is not a separate unit. It's more just, you know, a placard put on top um, to which things will be added later. Most of this you won't actually be able to see when the engine cover goes on. But uh, we'll try our best there. Let me see if I can get a little bit more light. Try and get a little bit more uh, detail going on there with the, uh, the supercharger and the intakes later on. Uh, now, interesting thing, compared to a lot of the other um, cars that you'd see normally built, is the uh, the rear half with the uh, the rear of the car and then the, uh, the cockpit or the, the cabin of the car is kind of separate from everything else. So uh, most of it's going to be the chassis and then the hood is actually, as you can see, almost the entire body and these uh, side vents get added on later as a separate resin piece as well uh, in the kit. Uh, now, as far as the resin kit goes, the uh, gentleman wanted to have something kind of, you know, most of his builds are kind of, you know, reduced as far as insanity goes. They're, uh, they're usually stock and they're replicas of uh, cars that he's owned or cars that he likes. Uh, and they're, you know, relatively clean builds as far as, you know, that goes. But he wanted to take things a little bit uh, insane on this build. So what we've actually gone and done is gotten uh, the Hammond Volcano edition of the uh, SLR from Hobby Design. And that's HD 03-0131. Uh, and this is a, an insane kit for already an insane car. We get, open up the instructions here. Now this is, this is kind of where the kit's kind of let down a bit. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of extra detail parts. A lot of this, the, uh, the body panels that get added on are actually bare, are actually carbon fiber. And we're going to mimic that later on. Uh, but the main body color is actually going to be a yellow pearlescent color, um, you know, which is, again, away from the norm of, of this client's uh, normal builds, but uh, should be really, really nice in the end. We're also going to have some, uh, some smoke taillights later on, uh, some badging on the door sills, and everywhere else. Now if we can flip the instructions over, we can see here that a lot of these parts a lot of the instructions per se are for the uh, the interior and the photo etch bits for the uh, engine and the exterior. However, um, when it comes to the body, a lot of the it's not really it doesn't really go into much detail other than to say like, hey, you know, this is this part, this is where it goes. It doesn't have to show you how to install it, and a lot of the parts have these uh, interesting uh, sprue gates or uh, mold blocks from the uh, the casting uh, that you have to shave off 
Um, one such example was the hood scoop here on the, the roof of the car. Now, let me see if I can get you zoomed in a little bit here. So this part had to be clamped down right in the intake here and then as well on all four sides with a heavy dose of super glue and then we came in with our bondic and we ran a little bit of bondic inside this uh, this seam that was kind of pushed up a bit we wiped it clean before the uh, we went and cured the resin with the UV light so as you can see this is kind of what it looks like so we have our applicator here and we have our UV light so we ran it in the seam, we took a cotton swab, wiped it away, and then filled that in. So that should uh, be nice and clean. The only issue was at the back here, this is where the mold block was. And uh, yeah, it, it didn't want to, uh, to be cut off without taking a little bit with it. So we're going to have to fill that back in, possibly with some milliput or uh, uh, some Bondo, that sort of thing. Wait, this has been cleaned up a bit. There was a, there is a slight seam line that runs across the, uh, the top of the rear quarter panels. That's been sanded down and polished. And then you can see the, uh, the line here from the, uh, the mold line, but that's, that's completely smooth. That's been smoothed out. Just with the, uh, the silver color on some of the Tamiya bodies, it ends up showing uh, that the seam line is still there. But in fact, when you put your finger over it, it's not, it's gone. Um, so that's it for the, the main body. Um, and then the hood scoop. Um, we also, I've have cleaned these up a bit. Again, I just find found time to, uh, get some time to actually film this, but, uh, hopefully it'll give you a decent enough reference of, you know, the quality of this kit and the level of detail that it offers. Okay. So. Again, with, with the instructions, it kind of just tells you, you know, for instance, the, uh, the front lip here, part J, it tells you, well, it goes on the front of the bumper. However, it doesn't actually fail to, it actually fails to mention that uh, on the stock kit, there's this lower chin of the stock bumper, which needs to be removed. So there's a little uh, panel line, I'm gonna focus. So there's a panel line that this follows along the front of the lip and that you have to remove. So that is this, uh, this lower section here that you need to take off. So again, the kit's a little vague on the instructions, but, um, you know, with a little bit of thinking and uh, problem solving, you'll be able to get that done. No problem. But, uh, so this is it, the lower chin installed. Uh, we're probably going to add some more detail for the led lights in this little alcove here. Uh, but generally once, you know, you clean up the, uh, the kit part and you add in the resin, you, everything should, should fit relatively snug. There was a little bit of adjustment. Uh, the, the, the fender flares here were bold, were kind of curved in a bit. So they had to be pushed out a bit and, uh, clamped down f to actually stick to the part. Uh, but other than that, maybe a little bit, in these corners where the flare starts and the chin splitter begins, uh, it was a little bit, you know, curved up. So you had to straighten that out along with the, uh, the cut from, from my saw blade on the bumper, uh, that needed to be smoothed out a little bit to fit properly, but all in all, now it fits quite nice. Uh, one th kind of thing that does detract from it is the, uh, these little dividers here, they're not quite aligned with the uh, the upper one uh, but that shouldn't bother too much these are a little bit recessed back from the original opening uh, so that you know a little little disappointing there but uh, you know maybe if you guys were going to go and do this yourself I'd say maybe you know shave these parts down a little bit uh, to where it's flush and then add in maybe some styrene in there to um, Sorry, just just to kind of align it. If that's going to be a big issue for it, I did. 
Uh, so what are we going to go on to next? Uh, we'll go on to the uh, the other resin parts of the kit. So this is the rear spoiler. Um, you know, a little bit of flashing from the mold blocks. There's going to be this massive mold block here, which uh, I'll probably end up, you know, cutting that down and uh, just using a coarse sanding stick to 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 bring it down because I don't want to end up busting that compared to, you know, this guy here. That can be filled in and smoothed over because it's supposed to be flush with the back here, but it ended up being a little bit of a step. Um, but for this here, that'll be a little bit more difficult to repair if I end up taking off part of the wing. So that'll just be a, you know, an afternoon of sanding it down nice and smooth. Uh, but, you know, detail here is crisp. There's not a lot of air bubbles. Um, you know, there's some indentations in the back here. I don't know if I'll be able to make those out, but there are some slight divots from uh, popped bubbles after the molding is cured. Uh, that's okay though that we can fill in with some uh, some filler, you know This is just the the general issue that you end up having with a lot of custom resin kits is they do uh, You know, they're you know made in mold blocks. They're not uh, made in a factory So you end up having you know little issues here and there Especially with some of the older hobby design kits when they uh, were first coming out uh, so these are the uh, the vents on the side uh, These are all molded in one piece Again, there's a little bit of issue with it uh, warping out this way. Uh, that's going to get addressed later on, uh, either by boiling some water and then shaping it back, or uh, using a shit ton of super glue and uh, and clamping it down uh, section by section. Uh, the mold blocks for these were here on the bottom. Uh, because this is fairly flat, it was really easy. Uh, I just took a saw blade and sawed part way through, snapped the part off when. Uh, uh, the edge was quite thin, and then, you know, with a coarse grit of sandpaper, worked our way down uh, to make it nice and smooth. Uh, so there's going to be some photo etch detail going on there. Uh, this whole piece is probably going to be carbon fibered later on, uh, you know, depending on, on what kind of scheme we go for. Um, where's the hood? There it is. So, again, so the, this is kind of the... The issue with some of these uh, these parts, as you can see, you know, lovely detail on it. However, the mold block kind of comes up and into the part, so you almost need to, you know, get a micro chisel or uh, work away with a scalpel to uh, remove the the fret or the uh, the mold pour block uh, on on both ends, you know. That's just the general issue you have with a lot of the resin kits is you got to clean them up. Um, not everything's going to fit right away straight from the factory. I've never seen one that would. Um, that's just how it goes. Uh, but these fit right on here. These fit real, really, really nice. The uh, the indent that's in the top here, that fit perfectly to the lines in the hood. And uh, it was a straightforward fit. There might be some, you know, some trimming we'll have to do on the inside here just to make that nice and flush, uh, but that might make it, uh, we'll have to see how the rest of the kit fits. We'll have to get this all installed, painted, uh, or primed up at least, and get the interior finished before we can actually fix the body panels. Because that's one of the issues with, uh, with this kit is because the body isn't molded as one piece, everything kind of attaches to the base of the chassis before uh, you can start adding the body panels and having it stick, which is one slight issue uh, with the SLR compared to traditional kits. Um, so here we have the rear diffuser. It's a, you know, nice big pour block on there. It's That's going to be straight against the line, so that's not a bad a problem. You know, we've got some mold blocks up here we have to sand down, but that's going to be under, you know, that's going to be hidden by the body and the uh, the rear of the chassis, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, next thing here, we have the rear uh, fender flares and the side skirts. Uh, now, there is a slight issue. Again, another fit issue, big surprise there. Um, but if we take the, the, the skirt, we're going to have to kind of pin this down little by little to make it actually stick. Um, 
but you can see here if we put the two parts together there's a slight gap might have to build that up with some milli putt um, just to make the the gap nice and tight uh, so that it's not uh, you know this this large space void of anything um, that's that and um, what other parts we have we also have some other uh, kit parts here these are not to, uh, are not mentioned anywhere that I can see uh, and then just generally thinking about it it might be uh, these parts here on the side some some side air intakes that's more than likely what these are but it doesn't again call for the instructions here it just shows a piece but it doesn't actually show it being installed or how to install it so something we'll have to figure out later on and mess with uh, and I think that's it for the the resin parts of the kit We'll just go ahead and, oh, no, there's just the wheels left. So, again, we've got our wheels here. We've got two different offsets. we got the front wheels here, and we've got the rear wheels here. Again, you know, some test fitting we'll have to do. Uh, remove all these mold pour blocks. Uh, clean up the inside of the hub here. Uh, now, the interesting thing is that the these rims that were made by Hobby Design are actually supposed to be a kit fit. So I'll be able to take these, uh, the poly caps that Tamiya normally uses for its road wheels, and I'll be able to actually slot these into here, which is a really added bonus, um, you know, where I don't have to, you know, super glue these or uh, make adjustments to the actual hub of the kit. Uh, these are just a drop fit stock. The tires that come with the kit will fit over top of these. Uh, which is a really nice added bonus. Now, this is where we start getting into the metal work of the kit. I don't know if you can see those. You probably can't. I didn't see them at first. I thought it was an empty bag. But here, you can see the really tiny valves for the tires. So the air the air valves that go onto the uh, the rims where you fill your tires for air. And these things are super tiny and these are gonna be an absolute nightmare when it comes to installing them on the actual rims. So that's, that's gonna be fun. So we're probably gonna end up drilling a little bit of a hole and using uh, either UV curing resin or super glue to attach those uh, but unfortunately there's only four so if we lose one we're screwed so hopefully that doesn't happen but anyway so there's the rims uh, and the parts for the uh, the valves so we're going to move on now to the rest of the photo etch that comes with the kit. Uh, it does come with two smaller parts here. So we've got our, our first fret, which is gonna be wheel hubs. So these are probably gonna go over top of the brakes. And, uh, and then we have our Hammond uh, license plates here, which will be uh, installed after the fact uh, and then we move on to the larger fret here so we have various parts of the uh, the interior so we have some pedals we have the radio boxes uh, seat belts grills uh, this is going to be all engine detail here um, you know, and then the photo etch frets for the Hammond symbols all over the car, with the grill, and then our brake rotors here. You know, some side vents for those uh, those pipes. These are these things here are actually 
uh, part of the brake disc. So you put, you'll wrap this around the edge of the brake disc and that's supposed to be the slotted rotors. Uh, and then some other parts here for that. Now, this is all well and nice. Uh, a lot of these parts that have the, the Hammond symbol on them, so the little bird, uh, these will be used. However, uh, once you see our next bit of kit, there is going to be a lot more photo etch detail and a lot nicer photo etch stuff. So it's going to be more of a mishmash of the two. Um, and then the final little bit of the kit here is our decals. Uh, so these are printed by Hogg Design. There's no other markings on it, but uh, the carrier film is quite thin. The the decals are in quite nice register. Uh, I don't see any blurring, especially on these smaller ones here with the Hammond symbol. They're kind of silvery. Uh, it kind of gets a little blurry when you get to these smaller ones here, but again, that's that's, that's an issue with a lot of kits. Um, and we have the bumper stickers here, the Volcano symbol. Uh, so a very small decal sheet, but it's it's also very nice. Everything's nicely printed on there. So, so that's the, what all you get in our Hammond Volcano kit from Hobby Design. Now, when we were searching up parts for the Mercedes, uh, we came across a Polish company called Aber. Now, as soon, like I, f I figured he'd maybe want to kind of gloss over because of the cost of this kit uh, and what we were already total total that, uh, but he almost instantly fell in love with it and wanted it and needed it. So this is what this is. It's the professional update and upgrade set for the Mercedes-Benz SLR for the Tamiya kit from Aber. Uh, and just looking at the, the front of this thing, you're, you're blown away by how much detail is actually in this particular uh, update set. So, just, just to give you an idea, we'll put that off to the side first and we'll bring out the instruction seat so you can get a sense of what's actually in here. So this is the front first half of the instruction sheet. And this is just for the chassis. So, in here, we've got and these are actually really nice instructions these two. They tell you generally everything and it kind of leaves a little bit to be uh, moved around. But, you know, we're, we have removal of the seat here. We've got seat buckles going in. Um, we've got the, the, mech, the sliding mechanism for the seats. Uh, it's not just a solid piece. So we've got that going on. So there's a, you know, an exploded view of this whole section there. And then we move down into some of the most insane detail work you've ever seen, right? These are solid rotors. We have like the, they're, they're one solid, I believe they're aluminum because they're a little bit soft. Um, but these are solid rotors that come with the kit. The suspension actually works. Uh, the springs are all individual. Uh, the brake calipers have individual brake pads. You're not ever going to see that, but it's it's just insane that this is included in the kit. So that's page one. Page two goes into the detailing of the engine hinge mechanism. So in the end, we're going to get something that looks like this, that works, and then that's the expand like scale mini hydraulic rods like how cool is that that's that's just absolutely nuts the, w the one little quip i have with this one is it doesn't actually show an exploded view of how all of these photo etch parts go into the engine bay um you know most of them are kind of in the open but if you don't pay attention and don't do things per the instructions uh you might end up not being able to fit some of these in uh, it's just a little a note to take care of is to just be careful that you're not installing too much and gluing too much together prior to actually going ahead and installing these parts. 
Um, so there's, there's page one and page two. And then page three we have here is just a general install of some of these um, interior detail parts. We're not actually going to be using this because of the, uh, the Hammond logo. Uh, we might use the, the trim piece um, depending on the grill shape, all that. Um, but the interesting thing about this interior set is it's actually calling for the entire removal of the grill, like the, the uh, air conditioning grills, and then installing some vents in its place so it looks 3D, which is really, really cool. And then the cute little part of it here is that we've got a little leather case with a logo on it and a keychain that goes on it as well, all in photo etch. That's, that's a really nice, neat touch, and I think that's super cool. And then with the last part here, we have the, hood, the, the door hinge pins here, which is just an, an, a half of a page dedicated just to a pin and a hinge that can open and close with the rest of the kit. Um, we've got some, some vents in here. I think, I'm not 100% sure if this kit, so this is the, the hobby design fret. Uh, so this one doesn't actually include any of those, those meshes for the inside of the grill here, which is nice. Uh, we can uh, add those on from the auger kit. And uh, yeah, so then we've got some other, you know, details as well that are kind of mixed in. You just got to pay attention to it and make sure that you've got everything that you want installed properly before you move along with uh, construction, just because then it can end up um, preventing you from installing those parts at all. So those are just the instructions for this. So now we'll go ahead and look at some of these parts. So we'll bring you on in. So here we have the, the brake calipers. Uh, these I believe are in bronze. Uh, they look certainly like bronze to me. Some very nice detail going on. I don't want to take these out of the bag yet because I don't want to lose these bits if they go bouncing around but some very nice detail going on with the brake calipers. And remember, these things actually have brake pads added to them. So there's that. Move on to the next bit, which is our brake rotors. Yeah, so, so slotted rotors, solid piece. Now I believe there is a photo edge piece that can go on top of this, but I'm almost half tempted to spend the time to actually maybe drill out these holes. And if I mess up, then I can just cover it up with the, uh, the photo edge piece that will look the same. And then we'll do a pin wash to make the, the holes look black. Um, but yeah, so these are, you know, solid rotor discs here. Moving along to, what we have, which is, I believe this is the rear suspension because the springs are a little shorter and smaller. And then we have our tire valves in there as well. And those are, that's a solid turn piece. You do have to remove parts with a, a knife or a saw or however you end up cutting your metal. And then this is, I believe, parts of the either the shocks or this might be part of the door hinge or the the door strut. So again, very small parts, very nicely turned brass. See so here we have some more pistons, and these are for the front. And rear shocks, these are the shock absorbers. I believe these are turned aluminum. Uh, so a lot of the parts are either turned aluminum or they're turned uh, brass. Uh, very high quality work. This is, a, you know, if, if masters actually started making parts like these, uh, this would be the benchmark to set for it. Um, 
th these are quite well turned. There's not a lot of, there's no burring, there's no flash marks. Um, you know, it's a stunning detailed piece that really in the end won't actually be seen, but it's nice to know that it's there. So a lot of the photo shoots that we'll have uh, we'll be taking detailed pictures of that before body panels actually go on. Uh, and then the front uh, front shocks here with a lot of uh, pins that'll kind of hold everything together. So I'm assuming there might be some soldering that we'll have to do just to hold stuff in. Um, you know, allow it to be able to hinge properly, uh, but still stay in place. So those are the, the turned parts. And this set also comes with three photo etch frets. Um, so the first one here we have is for our grill and some other assorted parts. I believe that might be the seat belt because uh, it does have a nice, you know, fabric esque texture to it. And then some other additional parts. These are the uh, the vents for those uh, side outlets. Well, those are very nice. This is part for the uh, the hinge mechanism for the hood. And uh, also the brake pads. And these have, this piece almost has like a, almost like a slight texture to it. Like it wasn't actually uh, turned. So it's it's almost got like I don't know if you can see that, but it's almost got like a texture to the to the metal. Like it was meant to be that way, which is, I don't know if you've ever seen brake pads before, but that's almost exactly what the texture of a brake pad would look like, which is super cool. But then you can see also the, the level of detail in this kit is absolutely amazing. And I get to build it. And then our final photo etch fret here, we have a lot of the detail uh, for the engine, uh, for other mechanical parts of the kit. Uh, we've got our straps, or the uh, sliders for the for the seats here. Uh, we've got some brake rotor parts, the uh, fan for the hood, or for the radiator, sorry. Uh, and then the uh, the seat belt buckles, so uh, an absolutely stunning kit with an amazing amount of detail. And I believe, yeah. So it looks like uh, those air conditioning vents that we talked about earlier are actually poseable. So we can actually take those and we can kind of twist them so that they look like they're actually being. Uh, like a 3D part that has a void in it, which should, is, uh, again, absolutely insane, the amount of detail on this. And that's uh, that's about it for the, the kits and our uh, parts that we're using on it. Uh, and I hope you guys keep following along. We'll uh, start next with uh, getting some more of the resin pieces glued onto the uh, the body. And uh, we're just waiting on some paint right now from our friend Matthew Bull at uh, Hobby World USA. And uh, once we get the paints in, then we can start going over the body and uh, moving along with the build. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day, and uh, we'll see you next time.